can be expensive to keep older family members at home. Today, the tools out there that can help cut down on those costs. And getting up close and personal with sharks. Researchers are trying to find out as much as they can about great whites and how new data could actually help other animals. And the reality of online dating is that, well, it can be exhausting. And now some singles are turning to a dating coach to help them find the perfect catch. We'll get into how that works coming up next. At 5.30 on this July 5th on the Now Indy, we've got some thunderstorms to deal with. Let's talk about temperatures in central Indiana. They've been pushing 90 degrees with a heat index above that 90 degree mark. You notice the vertical development of some of these clouds. That's what's building into thunderstorm activity. I'll show you in a second just southwest of Indy where I think it'll be more soon. 77 rain-cooled degrees in Bloomington. That's nice, but it feels very steamy. 86 in Kokomo, 85 in the metro area as you check things out. Not much in the east. There are spotty downpours as we go from Lafayette down to Crawfordsville and then between Crawfordsville and Bainbridge in uh, Montgomery and portions of Putnam County. A little closer, we'll watch in Hendricks County kind of fill in the gap here as we do expect more thunderstorm development southwest of Indy that will continue to move to the northeast. Warm everywhere, maybe briefly cooler because of the rain, and then you'll bounce right back. Temperatures between now and 11 o'clock will stay closer to 80, if not a little warmer. Amanda? Thanks, Kevin. A tribute to one of the survivors of the 2012 Southside explosion. Our Rafael Sanchez has covered the story for the past seven years. He got to know the people and their stories following the trials and during the ongoing recovery. Yesterday, one homeowner with a special talent for Legos passed away, a man who family and neighbors held in high regard. Dale Bear had a knack for turning Lego pieces into masterpieces. After becoming ill, he turned to the squares and rectangles and circles to maintain the mobility in his hands. It helped while he snapped together Buckingham Palace and its 3 by 7 skyline. It kept him focused while the White House and the Capitol building went up. He was driven to complete this Porsche which came with 500 pages of instructions and 1,580 pieces. In 2012, Dale was among the survivors of the Richmond Hill explosion. Though his home is across the street, he'll tell you he slept through the blast. Once he woke up, his priority was his wife and family that lived nearby and getting them to safety. Dale was big on family. Like the Ferris wheel he built with 2,463 parts, he embraced life's ups and downs. The ups, his wife of nearly 46 years, his two daughters and his four grandchildren. The man who mastered assembling blocks of all colors and sizes to keep sharp and healthy was at the center of his own magic kingdom. All enjoyed his multiple layouts of Legos, and no one doubted his loyalty and his love. And that was Rafael Sanchez reporting. Dale would have celebrated his 65th on July 18th. His funeral is set for Tuesday at 1030 in the morning at Forest Lawn Memory Gardens in Greenwood. A lot of people travel over the summer and there's so much to do before a vacation, it's easy to forget something important like making sure you have enough of your regular medications. Now, if you don't plan ahead, you may find yourself making calls to your doctors and visiting pharmacies you don't normally use. Rx Saver is a website and app that can show you prices of medications at pharmacies near you. Call your insurance company first to see how much you'll pay because the pharmacy price might be cheaper than using your insurance. And besides price, doctors Dr. Holly Phillips says that there's something else you need to be aware of this summer. There are a, a huge number of medications that create sun sensitivity, um, meaning if you, if you go out in the sun and you wouldn't ordinarily burn or get heat rash, uh, taking these medications can make you more prone to it. Antibiotics are known to cause sun sensitivity. Now, GoodRx and Blink Health are other websites that can help you compare medication prices. Well, the latest job report shows some good news. More than 200,000 jobs were added across the country last month, but the unemployment rate did creep back up. 
Economists say that this is good news after the job report in May, where fewer jobs were added. Most of the new jobs we saw in June involved professional and business services. Healthcare, transportation, and housing also topped the list. Well, despite more jobs out there today, people are still struggling to pay their bills. A new report from investment bank UBS shows that 60% of people in the U.S. have benefited from the stock market's record levels. Now, the other 40% have had to deal with higher costs for housing, health care, education, and personal debt. This group of people also owns fewer homes and not as many stocks. Now, the report found that 30% of all Americans would not be able to deal with emergency expenses. Like like losing a job, health trouble, car problems, or weather damage. Well, next in our lineup, some families may choose to keep their older relatives in their home because it's safer than assisted living care. But it can be hard to pay for costs that come with it. Next, the tools out there that can help you save money. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to the Now Indy on RTV6. State officials say a 12-year-old girl reported being shocked as she got off a roller coaster at Indiana Beach two days after a 12-year-old boy riding had suffered a medical condition and died. The Indiana Department of Homeland Security regulates and inspects rides. The agency reports the girl saw a doctor last week and said she'd been shocked while exiting the Hoosier Hurricane roller coaster at Indiana Beach in Monticello. The incident comes after 12-year-old Braden Cooper Douglas of Lafayette required medical attention while on the ride June 27th and died that afternoon. White County authorities say the boy had a medical emergency not caused by the ride. A lot of older adults are eligible for a range of programs to help them cover housing costs, but the problem is many just don't know about them. It shocked me. I'm saying a refund? It's hard for me to even get my disability. This is the first time I've ever known about this. The first time I came and applied for it. Yeah. You can still live in a government uh, run building and file for your property tax. And a lot of seniors don't know about it. Well, every senior citizen we talked to at this new AARP Foundation event in Washington, D.C. had no idea about housing money available for them. Programs vary from state to state and primarily target low and middle income seniors. Both renters and homeowners could be eligible for property tax refunds or credits, but applications can be complicated. That's why the AARP Foundation is using a new online tool and volunteers to help seniors find out if they are eligible and submit applications. So in some cases, we can even look back three years to determine if they would have been eligible. Well, older adults qualify on average for about $1,000 in property tax credits or refunds. The AARP Foundation ruled this property tax aid service out in D.C., Minnesota, and New Hampshire. They plan to expand to more than two dozen other states over the next two years. This is all an effort to get seniors to stay in their homes longer. And with the rising cost of assisted living care and a greater number of Americans aging, the financial burden can easily overwhelm individuals and health care programs. Amy Clark with the SeniorList.com advocates for other resources to help older adults stay safe in their current homes. There's technology, there are sensors that detect falls, there are sensors that alert a caregiver or family member if somebody hasn't gotten up in the morning, if somebody hasn't gone about their normal routine. Washington State recently did something innovative to address the rising cost of caring for retirees. It passed a half-cent payroll tax into law that will give eligible seniors or caregivers a $100 a day allowance for up to a year. Now, the money can be used for long-term care facilities and other things that help seniors stay in their home longer, like home renovations, home equipment, and in-home meal services. All right, still ahead in our lineup, one radio station is offering some unique services to its community. It's made for the blind, and we go inside this rare station and check out how it's helping the visually impaired. And Keller, right now. In an age of podcasts and audiobooks, you might think this tiny nonprofit radio station we're about to tell you about would never make it. But not only is the New Orleans institution still on the air, it is thriving. And it's all thanks to donations and army of volunteers and listeners that depend on the very unique services they provide. Chris Welch takes us inside. 
inside an old Victorian home. Postponing any activity or decision making would be best. In the heart of New Orleans, Indy will master 30 commands. Is a rare kind of radio station. There's one in New Zealand and in Australia. Turo reminds them of their dog at home. They play just about anything. If you can, work from home. Except music. The mission is to provide current information for the visually impaired. Every single day, a stream of volunteers at WRBH Radio for the Blind bring listeners 4.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Just about anything that comes in print. Not just our local newspapers. Fresh pork sausage, and that's going to be $2.99 a pound. To Dilbert by Scott Adams. We hit all of the major magazines. People, the New York. Yorker, the Atlantic. What is the coolest part about this job? Meeting all of these wonderful people who come in to our doors every single day. Volunteers like Mike McNulty. My grandfather on my father's side lost his vision uh, and it, 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 it literally took a huge part of his life. So, you know, it kind of spoke to me. Welcome to On the Town, where you can hear all about movies, art, theater, and special events happening right here in New Orleans. Your reader for today is Mike McNulty. Well, I mean, I'll one thing you do become is you become slower in hell. So I've got the kitchen memorized, and I put that island in there where I can walk around it as a, as a locust. These are strictly cosmetic, obviously, you know. <laughs> Tim Lindsley lost his vision late in life. Not only does WRBH bring him the articles he can no longer read. The one that I miss the most is the New Yorker. But in a way, it brings a companion into his home. Also boasts a stellar music lineup. It's a voice in a room that's comforting. Not only is it providing information, but it's also assuaging the loneliness that people who are shut in or visually impaired or people who just rely on others to take them places. You're definitely not isolated. You, you feel a lot more part of the world, part of what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. Reporting in New Orleans. 88.3 FM. I'm Chris Welch. Read. Thanks, Chris. Some Indiana schools are worried that they don't have the time or money to implement all of the mental health training that the state law now requires. Teachers must get regular training on suicide prevention, child abuse and neglect, human trafficking, bullying, and CPR. Lawmakers this year added a requirement for school employees to start seizure awareness training, which begins next summer. The Terre Haute Tribune Star reports that often no extra resources are allocated to pay for the trainings. Administrators say it's a struggle to find time to implement the programs. The Indiana Department of Education calls it a, quote, delicate balance. The department says there's a need for teacher mental health support training as they work with students who have increasing social and emotional needs. A quick thinking police officer acts to make sure a gun does not end up in the wrong hands. In a tweet, IMPD says officers were working on parking issues in a neighborhood when a car quickly pulled away. The driver threw a gun on the sidewalk before driving off. Metro police say an officer saw it all happen and quickly picked up the gun, which prevented that gun from getting picked up by someone else like a child. Looking to the southwest, a little darker sky there. I think we'll have some development of additional thunderstorms. You can also see, well, right-hand corner, that's Victory Field, a doubleheader tonight. First pitch of the first game at 6.05, followed by the second game. They'll be playing baseball till midnight tonight. Give you a second to look at this. You see what I see? That's a bear at the Indianapolis Zoo hanging out in the pool. Sherry Pritchard sending me that picture. That's one way to stay cool today. Over the next 24 hours, humidity stays high, temperatures warm. We'll also have periods of thunderstorms. As we get to Sunday, we begin to dry out. That'll be a several day stretch where we stay dry. Noticeably less humid and more comfortable Monday and Tuesday. Rain cooled 79 in Muncie, 73 in Lafayette in the 70s in Bloomington, where you have not had rain recently. Temperatures have cooled a little bit because of what you see there, all the cloud cover, 85 in Indy. The heat index values have been well 
well into the 90s. Not much in the eastern portion of the state. The heaviest downpour right now between Lafayette and Frankfurt. This will move north and east. Those of you in Rossville will have some heavy rain right along 431. You could see an inch of rain from that cluster of thunderstorms. Okay, here's the development we're talking about. See this little line that develops? That's what we call an outflow boundary. And boom, you begin to see heavier rain cutting through eastern Hendricks County, developing in southwest Marion, and then northwest Johnson counties. I think we'll continue to watch that progress right through downtown. Between 7 and 9, isolated downpours by 811. We really start to see that start to fade away. Here's your temperature trend tomorrow. Temperatures back up into the middle to upper 80s and rain chances become likely. There's a silent and extremely common condition you may be missing with your cat or dog. It's shortening their lives and has them living in pain. We were surprised when we learned how common and how early arthritis can start in pets. 80% of dogs eight years and older have arthritis. 20% of all dogs, no matter their age, have some form of arthritis. And depending on their genes and breed, dogs younger than one can have conditions where their joints don't form perfectly. It's common in cats over 12 as well. It's a chronic pain that causes poor quality of life and is a major contributor to early euthanasia. Dr. Hannah Capon started this canine arthritis management website to better educate pet owners. She's all about managing your pet's lifestyle to prevent joint damage. But she says one of the common things owners do unknowingly that hurts their pet is repetitive, vigorous exercise, like with ball launchers and playing on uneven or even slippery surfaces. And what people don't realize is that when they're so heightened, when they've seen the ball and the ball chuck, and they're like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. At that point, they don't show pain. They don't feel pain because they're so aroused and they're so full of adrenaline and cortisol. And they just go for it and they go for it and they go for it again and again. And it's only when they've actually hit complete exhaustion or they're really quite painful do they go, oh, game over, not, not wanting to play anymore. Now, dogs do need to exercise because one of the major contributing factors of arthritis is obesity. And between 50 and 60% of pets are overweight, which Dr. Capon says many owners don't recognize either. Well, online dating often gets a bad rap, but new research suggests people really want to make it work. An eHarmony survey found that 80 or 70% of American singles are looking for a serious relationship. And that goes for both men and women. The top qualities in a partner are kindness, humor, and honesty. And people who had jobs that required compassion or that are seen as caring were most desirable. So if you're not having much luck online, it might be time for a neutral opinion. Match launched a new service called Ask Match. It's free access to dating codes for Match members. Now they set up a phone call first and then they can text and email with the coach. They can help with a profile makeover, help navigate how to respond to messages, and of course, lots of dating advice. The biggest thing that we see when we look at someone's profile, they call in, they say they're having problems and we look at it and it's negative. So it's such a turnoff initially when someone reads a profile that says, don't contact me if you want this, don't come at me if this is what you're thinking, you know, and, and then listing exactly what they want instead of just saying something positive about yourself. Well, Rachel says, describe activities you like to do. Give someone a positive opening line. And when it comes to the pictures, get out of the bathroom. Include full body shots and not from 10 years ago. Rachel says, another thing they hear from women is that they're anti making the first move. And that's not how online dating works today. Match also says, over the summer, they expect to see a peak around July 7th for online dating. And finally in the lineup, researchers getting up close and personal with sharks. Ahead, the technology they're using to gather as much information as they can about great whites and how the data they collect could have a wide-ranging impact.